Hello, and welcome to this episode of Realizing Revenues. My name is Jeff Bladorn, and I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Wealth Access. In each episode of Realizing Revenues, we spend time with key executives from bank and wealth management firms, and we learn about some real world business challenges from their practices. And we discover how they're using technology to grow and evolve their businesses to meet the demands of modern consumers and to realize revenues. Today, we're joined by Sal Marone, Executive Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer at Fulton Private Bank in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Sal has over 30 years in the financial services industry with various roles in private banking, trust, and wealth management. At Fulton, they emphasize personalized attention and customized solutions as part of their client experience. So Sal, welcome to the show and and thank you for joining us today. So glad to be with you today, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Hey, Sal, maybe for starters, can you just tell our audience a a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Fulton Bank? I'll be glad to. Uh, So as you mentioned, I've been in the uh, the trust and financial services industry for about 30 years. Uh, it's uh, It's been a great journey. Things have really changed. Technology means more today than it ever has. And I've been really uh, thrilled to to kind of grow along with it. Uh, Fulton Financial Advisors and Fulton Private Bank, uh, we are a a, a subsidiary, if you will, of Fulton Bank. Fulton Bank is a $25 billion regional bank that covers five states in the mid-Atlantic region. And our business practice covers the affluent and high net worth markets uh, for those, uh, those five states. And as you mentioned already, uh, we do focus on customized solutions for our clients, very individualized service and attention to those clients. Uh, we are trying to bring um, a, 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 all, all of the resources, if you will, of, of the large banks and large financial institutions, but have that sort of boutique feel so that our clients know uh, who we are and we know intimately them and their families and what their goals and objectives are and try to match those up with the services that we have. Excellent. So so Fulton is obviously a well-established provider of financial services. Uh, and, I, and I know that you have many long-term clients. Part of the original uh, use case of, of Wealth Access was to, to uh, install a mobile experience. And that was something that was a, an important objective for Fulton. It, I'm curious, is that something that your clients were asking for and then in general, you know, how has it been received? That's a great question. You know, we're, we're both a, a traditional fiduciary provider and also a high net worth wealth management provider. So it's kind of a bifurcated response, if you will. We have some clients that don't know what an app is, and we have other clients that know very well what an app is. And, and those clients were demanding it. Uh, they were demanding that, that ease of use. They were demanding that access uh, whenever and wherever they were. Uh, So yeah, they were holding our feet to the fire for quite some time to give them an application that was uh, user-friendly and provided them with that immediate information uh, that they wanted whenever and wherever they wanted. So as part of your your client experience, uh, you've shared with me in the past uh, an emphasis on um, financial planning as part of your overall relationship management. I'm curious, what did your organization find to be challenging about trying to do planning at a, at a large scale? And how did you go about addressing that? Yeah. So there's a, there's a number of challenges there. You know, first, uh, you need the technology, right? You need the right kind of software, the right kind of communication tool to be able to demonstrate the importance of planning, uh, to your clients. Uh, You need the right time. Uh, You need to be able to spend time with your client and talk about the goals and objectives that they have. It's a transition in our business. It's it's less about talking about how well their portfolio is doing, and it's more about how we align their portfolio to what their objectives are. And then you need the right kind of training uh, with your team. Uh, that, That temperament that they have uh, it's, a, it's a sea change in how they have to think about their client, how they have to think about their business, frankly. Uh, so for, you know, for somebody like me who's been in the business for 30 years, you know, we used to think about it as, as 
how was your portfolio doing? I put you in investments that are outperforming the market. Uh, but today, that's not our approach. Our approach is to say, look, uh, you've got this objective, you've got this goal, and, and let's make sure we modulate your risk in a way that helps you ensure that you're going to hit that goal and not take excess risk and not take uh, unnecessary moves in your portfolio. Uh, so the, you know, the, the, the technology, the time, the training, all of those things kind of come together uh, to have a good experience for your client. When you're going through a turbulent time like we're having now, where there's a lot of volatility in the market, the planning is really going to pay off as we have that dialogue with our clients. You know, it's not about how poorly their portfolio might be doing right now as we've got all of these challenges. Uh, it's more about making sure that they understand that despite these challenges, they're still on track to hit their goals. And there's still strategies that we can use to hit those goals. So, so Sal, you mentioned earlier uh, that you know Fulton Private Bank, uh, the Fulton Financial Advisor is part of a larger organization. Fulton Bank itself is is obviously a full service financial provider, consumer services, commercial services, wealth management. You know, as we talk to firms in the industry, obviously that can be a huge competitive advantage for your firm. But I also suspect that it can present some challenges particularly in the area of client experience and maybe cross organizational servicing of those clients. Is that something that Fulton's taken steps to address and, and, and how have you done that? And you know, what additional initiatives do you think you, uh, you might consider at Fulton as well? We have done some things in our company that, that sort of help the rest of the organization understand exactly the value that we think we provide to the affluent and high net worth markets. Uh, so several years ago, uh, we, we launched what we call a private banking initiative. That private banking initiative was a, a means to get uh, a single officer, if you will, a single representative that would be united with our affluent and high net worth clients that could bridge all of the things that we do as a corporation. So that private banker is there to provide some investment guidance, some planning guidance, but also some credit guidance and some uh, some mechanisms to understand how our deposit programs work that would uh, give them some advantages as well. So that one-stop shop uh, was really valuable for our clients, but it was also very valuable for our organization because we, we've asked those private bankers to be our voice inside our company, to go to our, our commercial lenders, to go to our, our financial centers and explain how uh, this uniting of all of this information can be beneficial for our clients and beneficial for our company. So I think that's gone a long way uh, over the last several years of helping us get the message out and getting our company to understand better uh, what our, our, our value is, not only to our company, but also to our, our underlying client. Uh, so that's a, that's a mechanism that's really been paying off uh, over the last 12 or 18 months particularly as we've gone through the challenges of COVID, uh, because we've had that single voice inside the company continuing to uh, demonstrate the value that we can provide both internally and externally. So so I'm curious, Sal, how do you go about arming your private bankers with all of the information that they need? I, I imagine like everyone else, uh, the, the customer information resides on different platforms. Um, there are different strategies for how you can try to bring that together, but uh, it's important, obviously, if they're going to be the quarterback of that relationship, that they have a full understanding of the relationship with the organization. So how do you go about unifying that data so that your, your, uh, your private bankers are armed with the information that they need? And I don't think we're any different than any other institution across America. You know, we've, we've got different platforms for almost every uh, application that we have, whether you're a deposit uh, uh, program or a mortgage program or a commercial lending program or a wealth management program, you know, all of us are storing that data in different places. All of us uh, are presenting it in different places. Uh, but it is important for not only for us to have those tools, but for our clients to have those tools. And so we have at least given those tools to, uh, to our, our clients and to our, our teams. Uh, so we have used wealth access to be able to, uh, to bind those things together. Uh, wealth access provides 
not only the ability for us to have uh, our internal data all brought together, but also to, to bring in third party information so that our clients get to see that whole picture and share that picture with us. Most of our clients are doing business with more than one firm. You know, we know that we want to be their number one wealth advisor. We want to be that that main conduit, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to have relationships in other places for a variety of reasons. And we want to be able to give them that information in one place so that they can look at it and and it, they're sharing it with us as well. So we can look over their shoulder and man, we can make a comment here and there, right? It's, it's, it's all fair game uh, to make sure that they're maximizing their opportunities and, and making sure that they're hitting their goals. So Wealth Access has really given us a leg up there uh, on, on being able to easily at the, uh, at the client level, put all that information together in one place. So, so just kind of building off of a couple of those thoughts there, Sal. So the idea of, of that client's uh, total information, their total balance sheet, um, is that something that uh, Fulton actively then uses as part of, as part of your uh, financial planning efforts with a client? It can, certainly. So um, what we've done is partnered with not only Wealth Access, but Money Guide Pro. Uh, Money Guide Pro is a nice conduit. It's a nice uh, software system that allows our clients and our, our team to communicate very, uh, very efficiently about their financial planning needs. And uh, the beauty of it is that Wealth Access information ports directly into uh, Money Guide Pro. So if we can get our clients to to accumulate all of that data into Wealth Access, uh, which is really very, very simple to do uh, once we you know, educate our client base, uh, that information then ports into uh, uh, Money Guide Pro and it updates on a regular basis. And we can keep going back and forth with our client on a regular basis and indicate to them how they're doing. How are they achieving their goals or where are they falling short or where does our strategy need to be modified? Uh, how do they update those objectives? Uh, those are all conversations that we're able to have on a more regular basis. You know, if, if we think about how financial planning used to work, um, you know, even as long as five or six years ago, you know, it was a, a big folder of, uh, of right. paper and, and information that uh, you would only dare to update once a year. And even by the time you updated, it was based on stale information from statements that might be a quarter old. You know, Wealth Access gives us that information uh, in a heartbeat, basically, and we can update and upgrade and, and um, you know, continue that dialogue with our clients on a very regular basis without really doing a lot of heavy lifting on their part or our part. It's, it's really a good little system. Excellent. So, you know, shifting gears a little bit, one of the things that we've noticed as a increasing kind of use case of the digital experience is to work with uh, prospective clients, right? Where you can actually uh, allow a prospect to utilize some of the technology uh, early, right? So they start to understand what type of technology you would offer as part of a relationship. And you start to gain some insight into, into that prospect's investment portfolio and, and what you might uh, recommend for them overall. Is that an area that Fulton has um, considered uh, in terms of usage? and? Uh, what types of benefits do you think you could develop with uh, prospective clients? Yeah, frankly, from day one, uh, that was an advantage that we saw with Wealth Access, that we could give it not only to our current clients, but also to prospective clients to demonstrate how we can differentiate, our, differentiate ourselves in the market. Uh, and we've been using it uh, over the last few years with selected prospects uh, to intro that, introduce them to that technology and show them, and also to gather information uh, on them and, and again, help them see, um, you know, how we look at data and how we look at information and how we can give advice around it. Um, so we continue to do that today. We'll continue to do it in the future. Uh, I, I think we, it's, it's on, on some occasions, it's help us, helped us win some business. Um, I'm constantly getting emails of, of uh, clients that we've got to modify how we got them categorized in the system and how we can kind of link them up with our our trust system, if you will, or our, our trust accounting system. So I do know that it's working on occasion. Uh, so we'll continue to do that in the future because it does differentiate ourselves uh, from the rest of the marketplace. It's, it's, a, it's a good feature for us to leverage. Yeah, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I'm, I'm curious, Sal, any um, 
any situations that that you'd be willing to share in terms of either internal experiences or client experiences uh, as a result of introducing this technology to the relationships? Yeah, I'd, be, I'd love to share this uh, this what I would call a very iconic moment. You know, you asked me earlier, Jeff. You know, were our clients asking for this? And we did have a couple of clients uh, that were very valuable to us, both as human beings and and as as uh, clients. Uh, that were telling us that we were behind the times a little bit in our technology and our offering. And um, they would regularly call me, sit down with me and tell me you better upgrade uh, or we're going to you know, have to make other decisions on who's going to be our provider. So once we got Wealth Access, uh, we, we actually went to one of, uh, frankly, one of my favorite clients and said, listen, we, we hope that you appreciate this in the right way, but we'd like to make you the guinea pig, right? We wanna put you on this right away to demonstrate our confidence in this program and, and show you what we're really capable of. Uh, so we, we scheduled this big elaborate meeting uh, with a number of people from our firm to sit down with this client and kind of walk through everything. And Jeff, as you know, you, know, you, you have to invite the client to participate uh, ahead of that, and, and we did. Uh, and, and unbeknownst to us, he went in, he, uh, he accepted that invitation and he began to load all of his third party information in before we could even train him. So when he came into the meeting, he was he, everything was loaded into the system. And so there we are sitting in a conference room together, looking at all of his financial information. And I'm, I'm there, his relationship manager is there, his commercial lender is there. And we started to go through that program and, and really look at it. And we fine tuned some of the details, including you know, letting him know that he could uh, put in his limited partnerships, his privately held real estate, uh, some of his other business holdings that he could load them in and, and price them. You know, he did the Zillow thing right there in front of us. And as, as he loaded all of these things in, he said, you know, this is this is great. This is like my personal financial statement. And we showed him, you know, the, the button that he could actually show the personal financial statement. And his commercial lender looked at it and said, you know, all you would need to do is print that and sign it and give it to me. And that's all we need every year to kind of reaffirm your, your lines of credit. Uh, and the client said, that's all I have to do. I'm, I'm paying an accountant to do that now. I'm, I'm spending hours giving the accountant information to give that to. And he goes, no, if you've got it all loaded in there, that's all I need. And, and we, we then transitioned that client from another firm. He had half of his holdings with us. He had half with another firm. And he brought the remainder of those holdings to us based on, you know, on the, that interaction was shortly after that, that he made a deeper commitment to us. Uh, so, um, you know, we found a lot of value in, in, in the Wealth Access Program. We found a lot of value in making sure that our clients understood the depth of, of what we're able to provide for them now. So, so well, thank you for sharing that. It, it actually raises a, another thought, right? So you mentioned that this particular client relationship, not only did you have some wealth relationship with them that you were, um, you know, thankfully able to grow, but there was also a commercial banking relationship there as well. Is that a is that a common model for Fulton, where multiple business lines would be uh, servicing the same client? Yeah, for us, it frankly is. We we look at ourselves as a very holistic institution. Uh, we think we're very good at providing uh, a number of different services to our clients. We get great referrals from our commercial team uh, that are out there, you know, trying to grow the community by lending money to uh, to businesses and individuals. Uh, we also get a fair number of, of referrals from our, our consumer bank uh, with clients who are, you know, affluent and high net worth there as well. So we have a very close relationship with everybody. Um, and, and so it's not unusual for us to be uh, trying to find a way to serve clients with multiple uh, multiple chiefs of staff, if you will, uh, as, as clients are trying to do one thing or another. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a thing for our firm. Yeah. And, and, you know, thanks for kind of reaffirming that we wealth access is working with a, with a growing number of bank affiliated firms. And our observation is that many firms operate in a similar manner, right? And while each business line has their specialty and their discipline and it, it's necessary in that regard it's about being able to unify the customer data and then share it across the organization where you really start to to derive some benefits 
Uh, I, I'm really glad that uh, you shared the story about the personal financial statement. Uh, I This is uh, uh, maybe just stretching a, a little bit in our conversation, uh, but I think you're aware that uh, we've recently introduced uh, some solutions that are really meant to be delivered through the commercial bank uh, or through the, uh, through the consumer uh, experience. And that's all about working with organizations like yours and realizing that there's multiple channels that a client may interact with your organization and why shouldn't all of their information be available regardless of what channel that is yeah it's a it's a great point uh to me the beauty of of wealth access is is not only the information that can be shared across the company but most importantly it's it's what a client has access to right so for you know maybe the first time in their lives they're able to at least electronically or with the push of a button put everything together uh, you know, I, I personally have used Wealth Access you know, when we were we were doing the demo of Wealth Access to determine, you know, the depth of our relationship. I, I put my own personal information in there, and this is after years and years of spending probably three or four hours once a quarter of building my own personal spreadsheet to know where my holdings were, to know what their value was, to see what the changes were, and to kind of get a picture for myself. Uh, I haven't done that spreadsheet in years. I, I, I don't need to. My information's in Wealth Access, and I, I personally open it up on whenever I feel like it, just to see how's everything working. Um, I find it to be, a, um, you know, a, a really, really useful tool. And if I can, if I can, sort of tell you another story. This is a little anecdotal, but um, I, you know, I think it's pretty a, a pretty honest viewpoint. You know, just like lots of data aggregation. You know, nothing is perfect in this world, right? So wealth access is is a fantastic uh, experience, but you know, like everything else, you know, links are prone to break, and they they you know they they go down, and you have to update them. Passwords change, you know, all those changes come up, and you got to do a little bit of maintenance in there to make sure all your data is is, is flowing as nicely as you'd like to. Uh, but I find that that update, you know, probably takes me about five minutes to do. Uh, and it's not all that often. It's not every time I open the application. It's, you know, maybe it's once a quarter or so. Something's changed in the background and I got to go in and fix it. But I'm spending five minutes doing that tops. Uh, and that and that five minutes is a lot less than the hours and hours I used to take to, to kind of up, upgrade my system uh, in the past. So, yeah, every time I feel like, oh, I don't like doing this, it's, I have to remind myself, yeah, this really isn't a big deal. I mean, I have to... I have to be honest with myself and and say I'm getting a lot of value out of being able to wherever I am, whenever I want, uh, be able to uh, you know to see how I'm doing. And I think our clients are appreciating that as well. Um, you know, so it's 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 been a really rewarding experience, I think, for our clients. Excellent. So, so going back to the to the institution to your firm. Um, Another observation, a lot of firms, especially bank affiliated firms are standardizing on enterprise wide CRM solutions. And I know Fulton has some initiatives along those lines as well. Have, have you taken into consideration or has the greater organization taken a look at this, what you now have as a unified data model and how that can be leveraged as, as part of your CRM initiatives? Fulton Bank um, has had experience with a unified CRM system. Um, and we've been using that for years. We use the same CRM system across our commercial consumer and uh, wealth lines. Uh, the difficulty with what our former uh, CRM system was is that even though we use the same system, information really couldn't be shared very widely across. Uh, you know, from, from our end on the wealth management side, there's information that we just can't share or should not share. Uh, clients expect a very high level of privacy and they don't want that going across the com consumer and commercial bank and to some degree vice versa. Uh, but we have recently uh, modified our CRM program. We've got a new provider. And frankly, we're still installing it. Uh, we're, so we're not quite all the way there, uh, but we're now going to be able to share that information more uniformly. Uh, and the things that need to be private will be private, but the things that don't need to be private won't have to be private. Uh, so we will be able to have a better overall experience for our teams uh, with a unified CRM system. 
At the same time, like I'm certain, like many, many, many other institutions, and you mentioned this before, Jeff, um, institutions struggle because they're on different systems and they're on different platforms. So our consumer systems on one set of information, our mortgage is on another, and then we're on a third, and, and our con commercial group is on a fourth. And you know that doesn't even talk about our in international group and all the other folks that have all different systems. Um, but we have spent a lot of time over the last several years trying to build a, a uniform data model behind the scenes where all of that data goes into basically a very single, singular place. Uh, and we will then be able to port that information uh, into our CRM system uh, so that we'll be able to see across our, our whole company, you know, householding, uh, in a way that we haven't been able to see it before so that we can really understand the value that our clients are bringing and be able to, to help them understand what other opportunities there are within our own company to serve them better and more quickly. Okay, so so you've shared some uh, great observations with us. Um, you've also shared some things that you have going on right now. I, I'm curious, Sal, what do you see for the future? What, what, what type of uh, technology do you, needs do you see to continue to advance things at Fulton? I often talk about this with, with some of the younger people in our, in our firm. I mean, 30 plus years ago when I started, if a client wanted to see the value of their portfolio, there was only one real way for them to do that. They picked up the phone in the middle of the day and they said, how is my stock doing? How is my portfolio doing? Uh, or they would have to wait or the end of the month or the end of the quarter to look at their statement. Uh, you know, we we had all the information, we had all the access. Today, that's a that's that model is flipped. You know, most of our clients can get information as quickly, if not more quickly, than we can. We're busy serving clients. We're busy making decisions. We're not necessarily you know watching you know CNBC or or looking at data feeds. Uh, you know, all day long. So our clients have access to information in a way that we never had before 30 years ago. That's going to continue. Clients are going to have access to more and more information. The value that our industry will provide is that in that information is way too much noise. There is just too much information that is not truly valuable to our clients or pertinent for our clients or helpful for our clients. And, and so our value will be to go through that noise, breeze through that distortion and help get them to a place where they have only the information that they need in order to make decisions that are effective for themselves. So it's going to be, technology is gonna be used to make the, the information much, much more personalized, much, much more individualized and much, much more helpful for them in order to make really valuable decisions. Um, I, I don't believe that consumers are, are helped by one size fits all solutions because no one is really one size fits all. Um, we've got to find a way to get that information to them uh, quickly, uh, accurately, and in a way that's personalized so that they can make uh, effective decisions along with their advisor. Well said. Hey, Sal, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and for sharing your experiences. I, I know that the audience has come away with some ideas that they could likely apply to their own businesses. So thank you, my friend. Jeff, always good to catch up with you and, and all of my friends at Wealth Access. Thank you for uh, the time and attention today. It's good to see you again. You too. And to our audience, hey, thank you for taking time to learn more about how industry peers are innovating through the use of technology to address business challenges, and to realize revenues. Until next time, I'm Jeff Bladorn with Wealth Access. We'll see you soon with more executive insights on realizing revenue.